John Redwood, former Conservative MP and Minister. Sir John, good afternoon. What does that man, what that man was just saying, is that feasible, yes or no? No, it, it can't be done. You can't drag the king into party politics. Uh, this is a task for the opposition inside Parliament and outside Parliament. Um, I share the anger of people, but the petition has two aspects. It's putting forward a remedy which can't take place, which is a very early election. But it's putting forward a set of grievances which could be remedied. It's saying that this government uh, has cheated people by putting up a whole set of taxes that they promised they wouldn't put up or they kept quiet about during the general election. And they certainly didn't tell us they were going to take a load of money away from pensioners either. So they've had this disastrous budget, collapsed confidence, taken practically all the growth out of the economy, led businesses saying we've now got to be firing people, not hiring people, led businesses to say we're now going to be spending less on investment, not more. So there desperately needs to be a change of policy. So I hope what the opposition in Parliament will do is say that now that there are 2.3 million, and probably rather more by tomorrow, uh, who are so fed up they think we ought to change the constitution, can't we, as a constitutional parliament, get you, the government, to do the decent thing? Indeed, it's in Labour's interest to change its policy. It would show a certain amount of political skill if they said, you know what, maybe we went too far. With, but with you, and I both, you, you and I both know that politicians very rarely do that. I go with Mick in Wallington, John, I think you'd agree. Starmer may want to ignore the election petition, but it's his start of a 10. Council elections and by-elections soon. The people do not want this government. The only way to get rid of it is to vote. Can I ask you, tell me to do one. I hope we're friends now. I'm, I'm going to represent you as your agent because your career's going through the roof. Have you, signed this, have you signed this petition? Would you sign this petition? Well, I'm obviously thinking about it. Uh, I... Why do I hesitate? It's because I know that government won't do it and can't do it. But I'm certainly very much behind the sentiment of it. And so, um, by all means, people, express your disapproval. Mm. But please, opposition parties in Parliament mm. uh, understand this mood, as I'm sure they do. But kick up a huge fuss, you know. Why aren't we hearing more noise in our Parliament? Well, I, I thought that. I, I listened to... to say, this is completely unacceptable, Dave. Complete, completely. I, I, was, I was watching Mike this morning, Mike Graham, brilliant, Morning Glory, and, and he was saying this nation appears to be going backwards. It appears to be going backwards in so many different ways, John, and, and I'm with you. It's, it's always that I always get angry with people who don't vote. Make your voice. If you want to sign that petition, sign your petition. And, and I'm not being morbid, and neither is John, by saying it probably won't affect. It will at least send a very, very, very strong message. And I think, you're right, I want a vibrant opposition tearing him to shreds, but that doesn't seem to be happening, right? Is it frustrating for you not being in there anymore, seeing this happen, seeing the own goals that they're making, Labour? Is it, is it, is it a bit frustrating? On the, on the sidelines, or are you glad you're out of it? Well, it's deeply frustrating. I'm, 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 I'm glad I'm out of it in the sense that I'm not to blame anymore. Because <laughs> <laughs> if you're in there, you're collectively to blame, even if it's not your team messing it up. Um, and I obviously wish the, the opposition every success, because I think they've got a huge task. They've just got a new leader on the Conservative side. I wish her well. But now we need to turn up the volume and, and say that Four months in, it is awful. The economy is moving on to the rocks. And we're getting the opposite of what they prom promised. You know, that we were meant to be the top performing G7 economy with a bit of Labour magic. Well, we were briefly for the first half of the year under the Conservatives. And now we're bottom of the pack. It's and it's, it's, it's going to get worse, not better, including the government. I mean, who, who would think the government ministers would spend four months saying two things? One... Practically everything the government does is useless, but that, of course, isn't our fault. And two, it's going to get worse. Uh, and I, the I, only I, thing you could say as government, if you say that things aren't working well, is you're going to improve them and you've got to show some urgency. You know, if, if you want to get the health waiting list down Labour, as the other lot didn't, what is your policy? When are you going to do it? Are you doing it today or are you leaving it till tomorrow? I don't know about you, but I genuinely believe there is no plan. I believe he is re reactive rather than proactive. I, I, I always say on this show, I said earlier, John, you know, with Thatcher, even with Blair, I believe there was a plan. Whether you liked it or you lumped oh, it, yeah. the fact is there was a bloody plan. You're going to come with me, vote me out if you don't like it. If you disagree, I'm going to sack you. That's the way it is. I don't see the conviction politician in this Labour government. I see they won it through the incompetence of the 
Tory party. And suddenly, there we are. Today we've got Liz Kendall. I don't know if you saw her on Sky with Trevor Watson at the weekend. I mean, she's talking about self-diagnosed mental health problems, a fueling benefits bill. No, what's it, Sherlock? The Tories, are, I've been saying that for years. We couldn't talk about it. I don't believe that she even means it, John. I think it's just the latest in something they grab. And whether they grab something good or something bad, there's no plan. There isn't, mate, is there? No, there isn't. And they're going through all, all the bits of work that they inherited from the last government with Mal Stride as welfare secretary, was desperately trying to get more done to get the three million uh, of working age back to work, or quite a lot of them. And, and there were lots of delays in the system. And she's got that inherited work. Well, will she get on with it? Can she get the system to move it? And we had the same thing with the Chancellor. You know, she picks up the investment conference that the Conservatives had left her and said, this is going to be my great, great growth strategy. But then she links it to a budget that wipes out every sign of growth and depresses all the businesses in the country. Oh, I listen, I, she's currently talking to the CBI. I'd, I'd rather watch paint dry. Um, do you fear for us, though, John, on a serious note? Do you fear for this country, genuinely? <laughs> Well, I love this country and I think it has huge opportunity and it's, it's had great successes in the past. But yeah, I want my government to do better. Yeah. And it's, it's all our governments. We, uh, we are Democrats. We accepted the result of the election. Uh, but I want them to deliver those promises. I actually like the high level aims, this super fast growth and getting living standards up. Who, who's not going to like that? But they're doing the opposite on practically every policy to bring that aim around. So they, maybe they do have to listen to people like me and you saying, you know what, we're giving you good advice. We're not giving you partisan advice. But if, if you clobber everybody with taxes, and if you take money away from people on low incomes, the economy is going to get worse, not better. Of course it is. Of course it is. And also, just to finish, and I'd love your opinion on this, I said this, I've had this said to me, and I've said it in, in response. I'm not all too sure, sure, altogether sure that Starmer and so many of them, the first thing out of your mouth was, I'm proud, I love my country. So do I. I'm proud of this country. But right now, I don't think my government's proud of this country. I don't think this government is particularly pro-Britain. And I think that is really riling the United Kingdom population in, in large numbers. I really do. Well, well, you bet, because it's run by a not very good international lawyer who thinks that everything that foreign law says has to apply to Britain even when there's no good legal case. And what about the disgraceful giving away of the Chagos Islands to Mauritius, yeah. who are over a thousand miles away and never owned them in the first place, and who are friends of China, when there's an absolutely crucial US-UK base on one of those Chagos Islands, and then we're going to have to pay a load of money to rent it back on Mauritius's terms. I mean, it's just completely maddening. And, and there is no legal case for that whatsoever, Sakia. Well, I'll tell you what, Trump's going to do something about that. I love, I, I absolutely love having you on. Free of the shackles of that thing, you're brilliant. We love having you on the show. Sir John Redwood, thank you very much for leading on Talk Drive. What do you make of that?